Good morning. I'm Ann Southard. I'm the Dean of General Education at Northwest Florida State College. I want to thank Brian Dobson for the opportunity to share with all of you what we're doing here at Northwest Florida State to integrate uh, success skills into the general education core curriculum. I'm sorry not to be with you all for this meeting, but I look forward to being with you for uh, the next meeting. My contact information, should you need it, is on the uh, last slide of this presentation. We are calling these skills success skills at Northwest Florida State because we think they're as important to students who enter a baccalaureate program following their general education uh, and AA as they are for students who enter the workforce after an AS or AAS. So that's the reason for our term. And when we first started thinking about integrating these skills into the Gen Ed core, number one, we wanted to respond to our service area and to employers' need, uh, very vociferously expressed, for these skills in the workforce. It was so important to us to be responsive that we put this into our strategic plan. So having this uh, initiative allows us to meet that goal. And we believe in the intrinsic value of offering practice in these skills to students in the AA, AS, and AAS. Our timeline is that we've been doing this for about a year. We began research a year ago, summer of 18. We chose the Virginia Highlands Community College model as something we thought was appropriate for this institution. We presented that to all of our Gen Ed faculty who provided input that resulted in the four skills that we have selected, which I'll show you in just a moment. A pilot group integrated these skills into their core courses in fall of 18, and more faculty were brought into the project in the spring of 19, and we expect to see full implementation in fall of 20. So here are the skills. You'll see that the first four, oral communication, written communication, problem solving, and appreciation of diversity inclusion, are assigned to a general education content area. We wanted to be sure that a student who went through our Gen Ed core would, would not be able, I suppose is one way to say it, to avoid practice in these skills. So for example, in humanities, every course and every section of every course in the Gen Ed core will offer students practice in oral communication. Similarly, in social science Gen Ed core, Every section of every core course will offer the opportunity to master appreciation of diversity and inclusion. Now you can see that the two skills at the bottom, leadership and teamwork, are not yet assigned. Those are skills that, through the experience of our pilot group, we found were more difficult for the faculty, took more work, um, more pedagogical adjustments, I think, as well to include in their courses. And so at the moment, those aren't assigned and we're encouraging faculty to adopt these. We do have one faculty member who is including leadership uh, with the appreciation of diversity and inclusion in her social science core courses. We also plan to put in our class schedule, which, which um, we're going to do digital badging and I'll talk about that in a minute, but which courses and sections offer digital credentials and be specific as to which ones. We believe that student preference for the opportunity to, offer, to earn, say, three credentials in one semester in one course will encourage faculty to um, respond to that enrollment driver and, um, and to include leadership and teamwork. Currently, this is what the integration looks like. You can see our skills there, oral communication, which is in both philosophy and humanities, written communication, which is in composition one, problem solving, which is in uh, general biology and one of our liberal arts math courses, and then appreciation of diversity inclu and inclusion and leadership in American history to an American government. Key strategies that we found helpful probably most important was that we ensured that the initiative has been co-led by a faculty member, Dr. Dean Allen, who teaches philosophy. Then, as I've said already, we've assigned along, that was in collaboration with the departments, but we've, we've paired up departments with specific skills to ensure that all students will encounter every skill. We do anticipate a more organic spread of those two more challenging skills, leadership and teamwork in the Gen Ed core. We're also aligning our academic slows with the success skill slows. 
And we're encouraging students to take ready to work. So we're taking that state initiative um, and incorporating it into this one. You're probably familiar with ready to work, but in short, students can take assessments in four areas, including soft skills, and get a, um, if they pass, um, then depending on the level that they pass, they would get a different level of credential and a letter from the governor. Those credentials are recognized by employers in the state. It is, I believe, true, though, that the um, soft skills is just pass-fail, but they would still get that credential from what I'm told. So in fall of 19, um, we plan to establish the criteria for rigor and scope of the assessments that we're using. We are going to ensure that um, in these assessments we're using the TILT pedagogical techniques. I highly recommend that if you haven't looked at TILT, it comes out of the University of Las Vegas um, with Marianne Winkle Winklemass as the uh, lead researcher. It's strong um, impact on retention and stresses clarity and relevance for students. So it's, it's an excellent model. Um, we plan to establish the criteria for earning a digital badge or a micro-credential. We have some free software. It's called Badger. We don't have it yet. We're going to get it. It's called Badger. And um, it will allow us to issue an, a, an, an institutional credential to students who really demonstrate true excellence in any of these skills. So we want to implement that digital badging. And as I said, we want to align the institutional project with Ready to Work and make sure that students do, in fact, take those state assessments. So I thank you for your interest in this. And um, I hope that I can have conversations with, with some of you who are doing the same thing. I'd really like to learn from what you're doing as well. If you do want to reach out to me, my contact information is on the screen. Please feel free to do that. And again, I want to thank Brian for the opportunity to share this with you.